happy Sunday to my favorite five, Winnie, Sterling, James, Roman, and Cleo. Well, let's see. This has been one hot Sunday. I went for a little walk. It's too hot to go for a big walk. But I went for a little walk with the dog. Oh, do we have the word dog here? Well, we have it somewhere. We walked up the block, went around the corner, and then walked down the block. So I am so happy that I'm going to be reading a story to you. I will be reading a Scooby-Doo today because he is a popular guy. So we are going to hear about him. And yes, he is a dog. I never see a mom in these stories. But if she was there, she was in the story, I'm sure she would be happy. And let's see. Oh, here's the word dog. D-O-G. Dog. Scooby's a dog. Me? I am not a dog. We might see the word day. We probably will see the word not. And then we'll see ah. We always see ah uh in our books. Sometimes it's this, this, or this, but they're all the word ah. And we have the word before and after. We're always going to see the word and in the book. Maybe the word out. We're almost always going to see the word no. Were. Um, there might be a dad in the book, but I don't think so. In will most likely be in the, in this book, and we will see two. Like we're going to read the book. T W O, like uh, Scooby and uh, Velma would be two people in the book, and two T O O would be if we have too much, like it might be too scary. So, I. Love you, and I'm happy to read this story today. So, what is this book? It is a story about the dog named Scooby. So, I gotta go look in my book bag here and find where are you, Scooby? Scooby. Ah! We have Scooby-Badoo. A mystery. Beware of the beast from below. Oh, this is a scary one. All right. Let's turn this so we can both read it at the same time. Scooby-Doo and the beast. From below. Oh, look at this. Look at this picture of a beast. Green. Scary. Yikes. They look very scared. All right. Now oh, they're riding in their hippie van. The kids from Mystery Inc. were on their way to school to send boom. A loud blast shocked the road and a manhole cover flew up in the air. Let's see. Where do we have the man? There's that. That's a manhole cover. Usually we walk over it one around the street. But there was a boom and all this green stuff made that manhole cover fly up in the air. Fred, driver Fred, slammed on his brakes. Wow, look what came out of there. That sewer in a road. Wow. Roar, a slimy monster jumped out of that hole. Zoinks, cried Shaggy. What was that? Let's find out, said Fred. Come on, gang, let's Follow him. 
I think Shaggy and Scooby would probably run the other way. But Fred, he's pretty brave. Fred led the gang down the hole into the sewer. A hole in the wall led them to a set of caves. Inside the caves, Velma found old barrels. They were dripping with green slime. See those barrels? Ooh. Velma found those. Whoa, look at all that slime. Splat! Green slime dripped on Scooby. Wee, wee, wee! Here goes Scooby. Rah, 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 rah. Um, Shaggy wasn't the one getting slime all over Scooby. Shaggy wasn't doing it. It was three workmen who were trapped in cocoons. Oh, so Scooby thought it was Shaggy getting that all over, but look at Scooby. Three, one, two, three. Three workers that are trapped inside of that slime. The gang called the police. The police really didn't want their help, but the gang knew they could solve this mystery. So Fred stole one of the cocoons. Oh, there he is. Shaggy, start the van, called Fred. I know someone who can help us. The gang asked their science teacher for help. Professor Ruffalo examined the cocoon. He's alive, all right, said the professor but he seems to be frozen. I need to do more tests. On their way home, the gang stopped for a snack. Welcome to Fruitmeyer, exclaimed Franklin Fruitmeyer, the shop owner. It's not only ice cream, it's not yogurt, but it's delicious. Mm. Hey, I don't get it. All this fuss over began, Velma, and then, wait a minute, what is this again? Oh, like, who cares? It's shaggy. It's delicious. So what is this stuff they're eating? It's not ice cream, and it's not yogurt. It appears to be green. Getting all over their face while they eat it. Hmm. What is this stuff? The next morning, Fred went to see Professor Fallo, but Fred couldn't talk to his teacher. Something strange had happened in the lab the night before. Now the professor was stuck in a green cocoon. cocoon. Ooh. The gang felt the case was at a dead end. We still have our first clue, the cocoon, said Velma. I brought a sample with me. Hey, wait, Scooby, what are you doing? Like it's fruit Meyer, said Shaggy, taking a bite. The cocoon is made of the same stuff as the dessert we ate at fruit, fruit Meyer's. So they're starting to eat the cocoon. They just love to eat everything, don't they? The gang had to look for clues at fruit Meyer's. So Scooby and Shaggy went undercover. And look at that. They're wearing costumes. I don't think I've ever seen a dog in a dress with a blonde wig. Hmm. Okay. And he's got a red wig on and like a, some kind of uniform. Okay. The gang was looking for clues at Fruit Miner. Scooby and Shaggy went undercover. They got jobs at the shop and they let Fred, Daphne, and Velma in after hours. The kids split up, but it wasn't long before Scooby and Shaggy found the monster. Ooh, he's got long teeth. Ooh, red eyes. Wow, there he is again. He's pretty big, because Scooby's a big doggy, and the monster's way bigger than Scooby. Ah! Wah! cried Shaggy. 
Run, Scoob, run! The monster chased Shaggy and Scooby all over the shop. Meanwhile, Fred, Daphne, and Velma were looking for clues in the storage room. Until Scooby and Shaggy raced in there, that is. They're in the storage room, and Scooby and Shaggy said, Out of our way! We're running away! Gangway, said Shaggy. Wrong way, said Scooby. Shaggy and Scooby crash right into Daphne. Daphne fell through a hole in the floor. Hmm. And she landed inside a sewer cave. Jeepers, said Daphne. Somebody has been digging here. Belma used her GPS to find out where they were. Jinx, she said. This hole is under Crystal Cove Bank. <gasps> Bank. Hmm. That might be a clue here. Okay, there's the bad guy. That looks like a bowling ball. Hmm. What's happening here? The gang set up one of Fred's traps. We need to catch that monster before it steals any money from the bank, Fred said. Is the trap all ready to go, guys? Ready, said Shaggy and Scooby. Just then, the monster came in. I wonder how this trap's going to work. Let's turn the page and find out. Ah! Slam! The cage landed with a thud. Only, it didn't catch the monster. Instead, it trapped Fred, Velma, Shaggy, and Scooby. Whoosh! The monster blasted sticky goo all over them. Ah, that looks like Velma. No, Daphne up there. What's going on? Jinx, we're stuck, cried Velma. Run, Daphne! Daphne climbed up towards the food bio shop, and the monster chased her. Raffy, said Scooby. Run, 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 Raffy. There was only one way out. The gang started eating. They're eating this green glue, glue stuff. Raw! Up in the shop, the monster had cornered Daphne. But just in time, the rest of the game escaped from the green glue goo. Green goo. Splash! A blast of fruit Myers. A blast of fruit Myers trapped the monster. So they got that green stuff. And they blasted the monster with it. The gang was surprised when Scooby took off the monster's mask. <gasps> Wait, the monster was Professor Fallo? Hmm, that's right, said Professor. I found the caves by chance. When I saw they led to the bank, I made my costume. Then I made it look like I was Cocoon too. It was a great plan until you meddling kids came along. So he was doing this to rob the bank. You saved my store, cried Franklin Fruitmeyer. Free fruit for life. Thanks, Ruby Ruby Doo. I guess they like eating this stuff. So that's our story. So that scary, scary monster was really the professor in a costume when they saw that when they pulled off his mask. Well, I hope you like the story today, A Beast from Below. Now, I'll tell you what. Let's read another Scooby story. Giddy up Scooby-Doo.
They look like they're cowboys in this one with a horse. Oh, look at the using their lassos. Scooby, Scooby-Doo and the kids from Mystery Inc. were spending the weekend at Tumbleweed Ranch. I like this place is so cool, said Shaggy. Where? said Scooby. The ranch owner, Slim Jim, came over to greet the gang. Welcome to Tumbleweed Ranch, he said. I hope you enjoy your stay here, but you've come at a bad time, said Slim Jim. Someone has been stealing horses. Oh, we'll help you find them, said Fred. We are good at solving mysteries. We need to get close to those horses, said Velma. Well, why don't you take the rodeo clown class? said Slim Jim. Look at what they did with that rope. They got it all over Scooby. Okay, this is Jingle, said Slim Jim, and he'll show you the ropes. I think he's already seen too much rope. Scooby and Shaggy were great at playing the fool. You two will make a perfect rodeo clown, said Jingles. Hey, did you hear that, Scooby? said Shaggy. Like we're gonna be clowns. Whoa, boy, said Scooby. First, Jingles taught Scooby and Shaggy how to rope a steer. Shaggy roped Scooby, and then Scooby roped Shaggy. The rest of the gang watch and clap. Jinx, said Velma. What are those two up to now? Hey, they're acting like clowns, said Daphne. After class, Slim Jim introduced the gang to Tall Cowboy. This is my neighbor, Ray Bob Gilly. Howdy, said Ray Bob. Hey, Ray Bob used to own this ranch and all of the horses, said Slim Jim. Ray Bob nodded. I like to come back and visit sometimes. That night, the gang made a campfire. And then they heard strange noises. Hey, did you hear that, asked Velma? It sounds like horses whinnying. The gang ran to the stable. Slim Jim met them there. Hey, two horses are missing. Maybe the thief left a clue, said Velma. Velma and Daphne found streaks of white goo on the ground. Hey, what's this? White makeup, said Fred. Hmm. Hmm, somebody has been clowning around here. The next day, Jingles taught Scooby and Shaggy how to juggle. Well, look at that. Look at his face. Well, yeah. At least he tried to teach them how to juggle, but look at what they're doing. They're eating the fruit instead of juggling it. After class, Fred and Daphne followed Jingles back to the stables. Jingles patted one of the horses. See you later, midnight, he whispered. Fred and Daphne heard him and they hurried back to the gate. Scooby, Shaggy, and Velma were sitting around the campfire toasting marshmallows. Hey gang, it's time to set a trap, said Fred. We need to catch the horse thief in the act. Whoa, whoa, said Scooby. Like what kind of trap, said Shaggy. We'll camp out in the stable tonight, said Daphne. The gang went to their tents to wait for the thief. Soon Scooby and Shaggy fell sound asleep. Until a big scary shadow appeared outside the tent. Ah, cried Shaggy. He and Scooby slid deep into their sleeping bags. Get your lasso, Scoob, whispered Shaggy. It's time we catch that crook. Outside, Scooby and Shaggy saw a dark figure leading a horse away from the stables. Scooby threw his lasso at the shadow and he roped something. Hee-haw, said Scooby. Fred, Daphne, and Velma heard that noise and came running. 
So did Jingles and Slim, and so did Jingles and Slim Jim. We caught the horse thief, Shaggy said. Well, I guess you taught you something right, said Jingles, grinning. Let's see who's hiding under this clown wig, said Fred. Daphne pulled off the wig. <gasps> Ray, Bob, Gilly. He's the villain. The gang took Ray, Bob to the sheriff's jailhouse. I wanted to steal back my old horses, said Ray, Bob. You dressed up like a clown so Slim Jim would think I was a thief, said Jingles. I wouldn't have gotten away with it if he had, I would have gotten away with it had been for you meddling kids, said Ray Bob. You'll have plenty of time to clown around in jail, said Velma. They're so good at solving these mysteries, aren't they? The next day, the gang enjoyed their last barbecue. Anyone want to round up a few prairie dogs, asked Jingles. Hey, like we're more interested in hot dogs, said Shaggy. Rup, rup, scooby dooby doo These two just love to eat. All right, today we heard two Scooby stories. And I hope you enjoyed them. And I hope you're having a wonderful day. And I hope to see you soon. Bye-bye.